Good evening, how you doing? This is Minister Peyton Moore of 66 Books of Truth Ministries, and I hope you all are having a wonderful day. Men, I am so glad to be teaching this Maximize Manhood Men study. We're still on Strong Men in Tough Times by Ed Cole. We are in Chapter 7, and we're going to be starting on page 101 of Chapter 7. But guess what we're talking about today? Hmm. Genuine forgiveness. Authentic forgiveness, real forgiveness, truthful forgiveness. Hmm. Let that sink in. It goes on to say, when forgiveness is given, it must be offered in the same spirit in which it was asked. When a sincere person wants to clear up self of a wrong attitude, error in judgment or misperception, and ask to be forgiven... For the one forgiving to pass it off flappily insults the other's integrity. If you want to come to me sincerely and ask for forgiveness, I'm, I'm there. But if you want to come to me looking for a hall pass, I'm going to forgive you. But uh, I know that you're not sincere. You just want a hall pass. You just want to get by. You want to be able to get back in that space. No, I'm not letting you back in that space again. I'm shutting it down. I'm closing it off. Either we can reconcile or we don't have to. I'm going to forgive you. It's only going to hurt you if you're playing. Think about it. Here's a story about Ed Cole. He was uh, at one of his men's, men events and he was teaching. And there was a man that came up to him and asked him, if he could talk to him. And Ed Cole told him that, you know, I have to catch a plane, but I promise after I get through with this meeting that we will meet for a brief time. And this man told Ed Cole, he said, I saw you a couple of years ago and I really didn't like you. I really didn't care for you. I thought you were very arrogant. I thought that you were unloving. I thought you was bombastic. I thought you was just this rude this rude speaking guy just talking to me or to other men. Actually, what I thought of you was a bad word, but I won't repeat this word to you about what I thought about you. Someone convinced me to come tonight with them tonight to this meeting. I realized I had been wrong. You talk tough, but it is toughness in love and humility. Not a hardest of heart. I want to be sure I saw you today to ask you to forgive me for my attitude. Now, this is a man that he really didn't even know. He just heard him speak. And he thought Ed Cole was just this rude, arrogant guy. Unloving. No. With most men, you got to kind of be on it. You got to be aggressive, but aggressive with humility and love to let them know that you mean business. You're not here to play. If they want to be saved and delivered from what they're going through, it's, it's about being, being sincere. When you take this maximized manhood class, it's about being sincere. If you're coming to play, that's on you. It's not going to hurt me. It's going to hurt you. So let's be real and authentic. It says, now this man attitude never hurt me or touched me in any way. He said, I've lived with critics, Ed Cole said, for so long that I could easily have just brushed him off and said, don't worry. But for me to treat him offhandedly or tell him he didn't need to ask forgiveness would have been to minimize his sincerity. So I faced him squarely and shook his hand and said, thank you, sir, for telling me that. I said, I appreciate your honesty. And guess what Ed Cole said? I forgive you. And guess what? Let's pray. I want you to come to me sincerely. Tell me what you think about me. Get to know me. Don't just assume that you know something about me when you don't. That's the problem we have today. A lot of people just assuming that they know something about someone. They hate someone because somebody else hates them. Don't be a follower. 
be a leader. It says he left without the bothersome conscious and I left without a Lord uh, esteem of, of for him. The forgiveness was given in the same spirit in which it was asked and the episode was over. It was over. It was done. Forgiveness is always in spirit, not just in words. There's a spirit that comes with that. You see, it's going to be real or it's not. A lot of people just want to speak from the lips and not from the heart. Hmm. Sound like something that's like what the Israelites had done. Huh? Saying you forgive or making an effort to show it, make it is not genuinely in your spirit, does not complete it. God's forgiveness is given to us not only in his word, where he tells us he has forgiven us, or on Calvary, where he accomplished it. But in sending his spirit into our lives to witness that the act of forgiveness has been completed. When Jesus was dying on that cross, those two men on the side of him, the people that put thorns in his hand, his feet pierced him in the side, he forgave them. He forgave them. For they know not what they do. But the dead body, y'all know what you're doing. And I'm still forgiving. you. We may not have the relationship that we once had, but that's okay. The ball is in your court. Okay? Here's another story about a famous football coach. He left his office for the practice before a big game one year. And just before leaving, his wife had called to ask him a question about their son. Their son was misbehaving. He had snapped at her and told her to deal with it. No, 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 no. Your wife called you because she had a problem at home with your sons. You don't tell your wife to deal with it. You come home and deal with it. That game is not going anywhere. Didn't she know he was getting ready for the big game? She wasn't concerned about the big game. She was concerned about the misbehaving of her son. So on the way to the stadium, however, he realized the game was only for that day. He had to deal with his children for a lifetime. So he pulled off the crowded freeway knowing that it would make him late for the game. But what was the most important? The game of his sons, because his wife needed him. And he called the house and he spoke to each of his sons and then to his wife. He said, look, I'm sorry, he said. And he proceeded to solve the problem that created this tension in the first place. His wife had, hadn't had a quiet moment as he had on the freeway. His wife call was unexpectedly so she was caught off guard she had been dealing with upset children her own emotions and the problems he solved by phone she didn't at that time you know have time to even compose herself without really meaning it she said i forgive you she didn't really mean it at the time but her forgiveness was only in word not in spirit she didn't have time to regroup he called unexpectedly so that even when the coach came home, the situation was altogether totally different. His wife had spent time to think about how uh, great it was that he took the time to call. Uh, she thought loving of him and had forgiven him deeply, authentically. Forgiveness had been consummated. Forgiveness must be completed. God's forgiveness is ours, but we do not receive it until we ask for it. Though he has forgiven us, it is consummated only by our receiving it. Acknowledging that God, acknowledging what Christ has done is not the end of forgiveness. Receiving his forgiveness results in peace and joy that no equal. Okay. Though he has forgiven us, it is consummated only by our receiving it. 
Acknowledging what Christ had done is not the end of forgiveness. Receiving his forgiveness results in peace and joy that no, no equal. Hmm. Woo, that's powerful, ain't it? Apply it to your life. We need strong men in tough times. Now we're going to go on to extraordinary forgiveness. Extraordinary forgiveness. Forgiveness can come from the most extraordinary sources and result in the most extraordinary circumstances. Here's a man named Al who lived in uh, who lived uh, in Phoenix, told an incredible story on how his wife life how I, how his life had changed. Okay. Now by his own admission, he was. A, uh, a raging Cajun guy. So Ed Cole met him in Phoenix. Let's go back to that. And this guy that met him in Phoenix, he told Ed Cole, you know, by his own admission, he was one of these crazy raging Cajun guys uh, from New Orleans. And he liked to drink, curse, and fight. That was part of his lifestyle. He thought going to jail and getting drunk was having fun. But guess what? Al had a wife and some children. And his wife wanted a better life. And their two girls as well. So each Sunday, the bus would come to pick up his two girls for church. But there were two sweet little ladies who would always come to the house periodically to visit with his wife to make sure that the girls were at church on Sundays. He usually was unable to get up when they came. He avoided them because he probably had a hangover from the night before. But when they caught him unexpectedly, he guess what? He cursed them out and said all kind of vulgar things to them. Very abusive words. Then one day his wife packed up her clothes and she packed up her children's clothes and she left the house. And Al was free to do whatever he wanted to do. That's the way he felt. He had no family. He didn't have nobody to be over him telling him, you know, anything. He just felt free. So one Saturday night after his wife had left, his friends and their dates were waiting downstairs for the night on the town when the doorbell rang and guess who it was? It was the two little old ladies that called him on a Saturday night and guess what? His friend said there are two funny looking little ladies downstairs and in an instant Al guessed who they were. He knew who they were so his anger started to rise. He said tell them to get away from my house. Tell them to get away from my door. I don't want to speak with them. Soon his friends returned to the room. Man they won't leave. They, and his friend said me and the girls we getting up out of here because you know what this is looking kind of weird. This is looking kind of crazy. So what is it? So Al ran downstairs in a rage and the elderly ladies, they sit on the couch. We even got his permission with their arms folded. And guess how he greeted them, cursing and raising hell, threatening to put them out the house and if they ever came on his property again, he was going to bash their faces in. He continued to use vulgar language. But on the inside, though, he was very Scary. He was trembling because these ladies had to know already prayed the prayer of, a prayer of authority to cast Satan out. Inside, though, he was trembling, not from anger, but from fear of these two little serene ladies that were sitting there with the serene spirit sitting before him because they had them pray in the name of Jesus. You got to pray in the name of Jesus to cast Satan out. When he finally took a breath, one spoke very confidentially. They said, we know all about you. She said, hmm, you don't scare us. That's what you got to tell Satan. I'm not afraid of you. You have to come with power and authority. I'm not afraid of you. We're here because we want you to know the Lord forgives you. And we do too. We believe the Lord sent us here so you could be saved. That's why you got to come in big and bold and not afraid. Because Satan is not afraid of you. He's really not afraid of you until you start sinning in the name of Jesus. So all of this sent Al into a whole other triad. He told me he was never so scared in all his life as he was doing all his curse to those ladies. Again, he paused and they took the opportunity to say again, we know you want us to leave. But while we are here, we're going to pray for you. The Lord told us to come here because he wants to save you. That's what God wants to do. 
We need to raise up more strong men in tough times. We need to get you off these drugs. We need to let God deliver you from those drugs, alcohol, pornography, sex addictions. Quit being an adulterer or fornicator. We need God to come in and deliver you right now. These two little old ladies were very strong in spirit than Al. No matter what he said, they just sat there. They were immovable. Finally, Al ran out of words to say, and guess what? He began to weep. He began to cry. He began to break down. He began to come under the, uh, under the subjection of what God was trying to do. So by the end of the evening, he had surrendered his life to Christ and found a Savior. Man, those, lady were those ladies were tough, he said. They were strong. But guess what? They won me to Christ. They won Al to Christ. Those ladies had God's forgiveness for Al in their hearts. All Al had to do was to receive it. It was no use to him until he did so. It's one thing to pray for an answer, but it's another to be an answer. Forgiving people can become God's answer to another's prayer. To forgive as God forgives can come only by the power of his Holy Spirit. Where his Holy Spirit ushers forgiveness, release follows. Here's another one at one of our men meeting in Anaheim, uh, California. A man stood up, made a confession. Tonight, I gave my heart to Christ. This man realized that there were some things going on that he had hurt his children and his son so badly. He realized I needed to ask my son to forgive me. We need God's help right now. I haven't been a good father, he said. Confession. And it hurt him. Will you pray for me, Pastor Ed Cole? So from the podium where Ed Cole said he stood, he asked him, where's his son? He pointed down the row of seats where his son was and asked the young man to stand up. Do you believe that your father means what he says? I asked the teenager what Ed Cole said. The young man said yes. And immediately his father looked toward him and asked, son, will you forgive me? Please, will you forgive me? I've been wrong. I haven't been good to you. I haven't been a good father to you. That's what you need to turn to your sons and your daughters and tell them if you haven't been a good father. The other men, they stood and allowed the father and his son to embrace each other. And they stood there and they applauded and they, they hollered and they screamed and they gave high fives. And they just thanked God for to see this reconciliation come back together. The month following, I heard what had happened after their reconciliation. The father and son went home that evening and told their mother and the daughter what, the, what had happened. What the son and daughter had never knew is that their parents were never really married. You see how Satan was working that? Living in fornication was causing all of these problems, then brought a curse on the family. They didn't believe in marriage at that time. They just believed in settled down shacking. Okay? After the family rejoiced together in their new relationship because they finally admitted that they had never been married to their children. They went their ways and retired for the night, but in privacy in another bedroom. The man asked the woman to forgive him for to forgive her for not marrying him. So the man asked her to forgive him for not. Asking her to marry him. So he proposed. She agreed. They called their children to the living room. And again, this is what happened. They asked the children to forgive them both. The following week, it was filled with excitement. They planned a wedding. The next Sunday night, at the close of his service at their church, the pastor asked the congregation, the congregation to remain seated for something special. The father and the son walked down the aisle. Looking toward the back as the organ played, they started to play the wedding song. In walked the mother and the daughter, and the children stood beside their parents. And then the pastor asked, who gives this couple to be married? And the children said, we do. Forgiveness had brought the couple release and unity. Forgiving 
and to be forgiven. Forgive and to be forgiven is God's way. So by them putting all of this in a position to be done the correct way, forgiveness had brought both release and unity. Forgive and be forgiven, that's God's way. Your greatest gift today is forgiveness to be imparted or received. And in these tough times, you can be your own best friend or your worst enemy. By forgiveness, you do yourself a service. By unforgiveness, you do a disservice. You're not going to receive no blessings if you don't forgive. You receive blessings if you forgive. Because if you don't forgive those who hurt you, your Heavenly Father won't forgive you. That's God's word. Forgiveness is a mature trait of a manly character. You can open a whole new world for someone, including yourself, by dying to your own feelings and pride and letting God's Holy Spirit work in your life. Try it. Do it today. And forgiveness is even better given than received. And forgiveness is even better given than received. So let's go through some end of the thoughts of the day. Forgiveness opens, unforgiveness closes. When God forgives us, he remembers our, he remembers our sins against us no more. Your forgiveness of others is your greatest gift of them. Forgiveness is always in spirit, not in words. It's one thing to pray for an answer, but another thing to be an answer. I hope you all enjoy that. Man. Use it in your life. Love and forgiveness. Thank you.